Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we are going to discuss fluid and electrolyte imbalance. So let's begin with the fluid part. The fluid in our body, that is water, it consists of about 60% of the total body weight. That would be 24 liters in a 40 kg individual. And this water is distributed into an intracellular and an extracellular compartment. The extracellular fluid is um, present in intravascular space and interstitial space. If the water percentage goes beyond 60%, it would create an imbalance. If this value goes below 60%, it would be called fluid volume deficit or hypovolemia or isotonic dehydration. And if it goes um, above 60%, then that would be fluid volume excess or hypervolemia. Fluid volume deficit could happen due to excess sweating, decre decreased drinking water, vomiting, diarrhea, hemorrhage or diuretic therapy. And the patient would uh, suffer from headache, dizziness, tiredness, increased thirst, muscle weakness, and darker urine, and in decreased urination to save the remaining water. If this condition is not treated immediately by drinking adequate amount of water, the patient may go into severe hypovolemia and that would result in a state of hypovolemic shock. If the hypovolemia is mild to moderate, the patient may be treated with ORS solution. But if the hypovolemia is severe, fluid resuscitation must be done immediately by correcting the water deficit first. The water deficit is the amount of water that is lost from the body and it can be calculated by this formula. And uh, after the water deficit has been corrected, maintenance fluid must be given for 48 hours. And uh, these are the formulas for maintenance fluid for 0 to 10 kg individual, for 10 to 20 kg individual and for more than 20 kg individual. There is an easier formula for a patient above 40 kg. You add 40 to the weight of the patient and multiply it by 24. This will give you the maintenance dose for 24 hours. Next is fluid volume excess or FVE or hypervolemia. This could cause due to increase in take of sodium because since uh, sodium and water move together, so increased sodium may also increase water. And certain medications could also cause hypervolemia IV solution if given without monitoring and certain diagnostic dyes can also cause hypervolemia. The symptoms would be increased weight, edema, increased blood pressure, increased urinary output, pulmonary congestion due to pulmonary edema, headache, seizures, anorexia and nausea due to the feeling of fullness. We can treat hypervolemia by diuretic therapy and restriction of sodium and saline intake. These are some of the major intracellular and extracellular electrolytes and their normal ranges. Sodium ranges from 135 to 145 milli equivalents per liter, potassium 3.5 to 5.0 milli equivalents per liter, chloride 95 to 105 milli equivalents per liter, calcium 8.5 to 10.5 milligram per deciliter, magnesium 1.5 to 2.5 milli equivalents per liter. Let's start with the imbalance of sodium, which would be called either hyponatremia or hypernatremia. So hyponatremia Hyponatremia occurs when sodium level uh, decreases from 135 milli equivalent per liter. This could occur due to excessive diaphoresis, wound drainage, congestive heart failure, low salt diet, renal disease or diuretics. The symptoms would include generalized skeletal muscle weakness, headache, personality changes and sodium level below 120 may also cause cerebral edema in shallow respirations, cardiac changes depend on fluid volume and increased GI motility, nausea, diarrhea and increased urine output. The cardiac changes would be either increased or decreased cardiac output. If hyponatremia occurs along with water loss then there would be increased cardiac output. If it occurs without water loss then no change in cardiac output or maybe reduced cardiac output. Now the treatment also depends upon the fluid changes. If fluid loss is also there then we must uh, correct the wa water deficit first along with sodium so 2 to 3 percent normal saline should be given intravenously and if fluid loss is not there we can administer a diuretic instead of given sodium and this would bring the sodium level to normal concentration and also uh, the patient must be uh, in the patient must also increase oral sodium intake and restrict oral fluid intake one thing that should be considered during therapy of sodium uh, hyponatremia is that uh, too rapid infusion of uh, so normal saline will cause central pontine demyelination which is uh, the sodium extracts water molecules from the brain cells 
this may cause neurological damage so the infusion rate must not exceed 10 millimoles per liter per day next is hyponatremia which is sodium concentration greater than 145 milli equivalents per liter this is most commonly caused by excessive water loss through the gastrointestinal tract due to vomiting or diarrhea water loss could also occur through skin by burns or sweating or kidneys in diabetes insipidus impaired renal function or by diuretic therapy hyponatremia could also be caused by decreased water intake or directly by increased sodium intake or sodium administration through IV fluids or in hyperaldosteronism where sodium absorption is increased. Clinical signs would be increased thirst, dry swollen tongue, flushed skin, postural hypertension due to decreased volume, oliguria, spontaneous muscle twitches. When these symptoms are shown it is known as symptomatic hypernatremia which normally occurs at sodium levels greater than 160. Hypernatremia can be treated by diet therapy or drug therapy. For mild cases, patient is advised to drink adequate amount of water and this would be diet therapy. Drug therapy is given for severe hypernatremia in which there are acute cases or chronic cases. For acute, 5% dextrose or D5W is given intravenously or for chronic, 0.45% NSCL is given intravenously. The infusion rate should also be monitored if the infusion exceeds infusion rate exceeds 12 milli equivalents per liter per day it may cause cerebral edema